Hi, everybody. Welcome to airplanehunters.org and uh, uh, welcome once again to our uh, adventures all over the world, uh, saving Halifaxes, uh, rebuilding airplanes, uh, diving on uh, uh, our Halifax that we have off the coast of Sweden. And uh, we've got so many different subjects we can tell you about the uh, Chris Charland with the uh, World War II veterans interviews. Come up with a secret weapon. They 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 had they they had jets landing on Ellerbon just a few miles from our place. So that's the first time we saw them. What did you think when you first saw a jet without a propeller? The Blenheim was the biggest plane I saw. Well, a wimpy. I saw my second or third cousin came to see me it flew a wimpy. That's the two of the biggest planes I'd seen. I didn't know, even know what a Frank, uh, but a Lancaster or a Wellington or, you know, any of those planes were like. Scott Knox with uh, the rebuild shop where he's actually rebuilding a Halifax bomber. And, um, but the, the latest news is we've just come back from our salvage operation, our tugboat and diving operation of a Royal Canadian Air Force Halifax off the coast of Sweden in about 40 meters of water, sorry, 40 feet, which is 14 meters of water. See, I got that right. Okay, and uh, with me today are two of our valuable members of the diving team that was with us again this year. Well, Lassie was here this year, but Eileen came last year, but Lassie and Eileen were both diving this summer. So uh, welcome to you, uh, Lassie and Eileen, and thanks for helping us out. No problem. Hey, you, Carl. How are you? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Good, good. And um, so uh, we started at the end of June, and you guys were there. Both of you were there for well over 50% of the time when we were diving. And you made uh, discoveries of special parts uh, for the Halifax. And uh, uh, so tell me how, initially, tell me how you felt about uh, being, uh, saving history uh, while doing the thing you love, which is diving. Uh, let, me, let me say, this is it's like a kind of an honor to be a part of the expedition and all that kind of stuff, because we love diving and this is like historic diving. This is like a, a project, we, this is like a, a hobby thing at the same time. And when we, we do this because of historic, because we also like history. We also like uh, Second world, world War history and stuff like that. So it's just like a super special thing. And to be a part of, to come down, dive down ourselves and like find the parts, search for the parts, clean the parts, bring them up. The whole, whole uh, from the beginning when we take it up, so we came into the shore, give it to you, and you give it, it comes to Canada. And it's like a, it's like a big honor to be, be a part of that. Super cool. It's amazing. Right. And Eileen, you got to see the diving team and the skipper, Gustav, and everybody working together. Uh, how did you like that? And what did you, what were your feelings about seeing this team together? It, it, it felt great. It uh, looked like they were uh, um, all, all fixing together. Everybody knew what to do, where well, everybody could be a, a, a part of the team. Um, uh, their own qualities and their own things that do good. And um, it, it seems like an experience team also. Uh, uh, and the atmosphere was great. Everybody respects for, for each other's work and for each other's time. So it worked pretty good. Yeah, you know, when, what I liked was uh, during the winter time before this summer, on the river, uh, river Thames boat, they improved the whole boat with the new compressor and, yeah. uh, you know, putting the pumps in a very good spot so that there was less noise. And you guys could easily uh, recharge your uh, bottles for your diving uh, with the new system. So we're getting better and better each year at doing this. And I would say uh, for sure we're going back next year. And uh, but you know, Carl's job, I'm not the divers, you guys, you are. 
But my job is to gather the moolah and bring in uh, donations so we can keep going. So, you know, Eileen, I wanted to ask you about that yes, special yes. little trip you did with the young lady diver. She's a brand new diver, just past her diving courses, but now she has to gain that experience. And she, and I think you said she had only gone to uh, like three or four or five meters under the water. Yes. So. This dive was deeper than the previous dive that she did. And uh, I, I'm an instructor and I love to teach. So I, uh, for me, it uh, was perfect to help her go in the water, and go all that process and uh, bring her an amazing experience. We believe she won't forget that. We also record her and she has the recordings of uh, all the dive. She, she, she could actually work with a pump. Uh, work uh, with the hose and work underwater, like removing the sun. In the, in, in the he did the job we were doing for, for yeah. some minutes. Yeah. So you're saying not only did she get that new dive of going to 14 meters for yeah. getting experience, but she was actually using what we call it is Sue the vacuum cleaner. Exactly, exactly. Uh, with me, obviously, with me together with her helping controlling the situation, but she could actually do a, a little part of what we've been doing under there. Sure. And, you know, let's go back into the past. Uh, the Swedish Diving Club, SCSC, that started our diving, and they include you now, um, when, when we found out that Halifax was exactly here and they knew where it was, and they said, well, Carl, you can go and look at it, but you can't touch it because you can't get a salvage permit. Oh. And I said, I said to myself, clearly, they don't know Carl Kajarska. <laughs> no, no. And so then I went back to the Parliament of Canada and I spoke to the Minister of Defense of Canada and I said, will you write me a letter telling the Swedes that we want to get our airplane back? So he wrote a letter from the Minister of Defense of Canada to the Minister of Defense of Sweden. He sent this official letter and said, yeah, Carl's group wants to recover this airplane. Is it okay if we get our airplane back? And, all, and the SC guy says, you, you'll never get a salvage permit from the Swedish government. And now we have the salvage permit for the Halifax. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like hockey. you got to be able to stick handle really good. And that's my job is to get all the, the BS out of the way and get the, get, get the permissions, get the money, and let's go. Uh, so uh, I will do the most funny job. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Now, uh, you're going to uh, back to Dominican Republic. You spend time in the winters there, yeah. and you're doing diving for what would you call it, uh, excursions uh, for tourists to go diving? And uh, Eileen, you also give uh, instruction. Yes, uh, we work in a dive center. And so certified divers and beginners go to the dive center. I'm instructor, so I can take them both. And uh, we work as instructor and videographer for Lessa. Yeah, okay. We work the same place because in the beginning when I met Eileen, I met Eileen last year in Dominican Republic. She was working for like freelance for different companies. And the company I was working with, the videographing, I got in her as, uh, in yeah. as an instructor. So we actually work the same place. So I do videographing and Good. I have to work with she do the teaching part. Okay, so, so like, here's, here's what I think we should do is when you're down there in the winter time, uh, let's connect on Zoom and you can share videos with us and things like that. It's just fun to see what other divers are doing. And, you know, we can expand this, you know, like remember uh, Jacques Cousteau had Calypso. Uh, we have Gustav and River Thames. Yeah, exactly. exactly. There's, there's, there's more adventures to go. Um, yeah. and, and now remember we call our first, uh, uh, an abbreviation for our team is TNT. Huh? Is three nations team, but now 
that lady, be, it's, it's that lady beside you, she has sabotaged the Three Nations team. So now yeah. it's going to have to be TNTU. Yeah. <laughs> or, or Uruguay. Okay. Uruguay. Okay. Did I do the, did I do the Uruguay? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're pretty good. Okay. Good, good. okay. Yeah. Well, Uruguay. Um, yeah. So, you know, this, uh, this was lots of fun. Uh, uh, over this summertime, uh, uh, we want to show you in the coming days before you go back to Dominican Republic, we will have shows for you about rebuilding all the parts that come out of the water or come from wherever in the world. They go to the rebuild shop near the city of Toronto, sorry, yeah. Ottawa. Okay. And Scott Knox is our mastermind for rebuilding the airplane to something that looks very good and is historically correct. So that is called the rebuild shop. So oh, yeah. everything we save and find is uh, it's important to Scott Knox. So we are the we are the Halifax bloodhounds that go out and go sniffing, <laughs> even if it's under the sand, yeah. we can find that stuff. And um, I think that the more we probe under the sand to find stuff, the better we are. Because uh, Lassie, you know that the structures, the parts that were on top of the sand yeah. are not as good well, be yeah. because the corrosion is a little too yeah. much. But the stuff, that, what, the stuff that we found under the sand, like that great big section of flap, ah. that's that's going to be dynamite for the rebuild. Super cool. But so project it under the sand. So yeah. Lots of rock, but not so much salt in the Baltic Sea also. But at the same time, if all this stuff laid covered under the sand, it's more yeah. protected. So it is, when you took yeah. this up, it's and the, good the, the location where we are is 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 a good spot for 80% fresh water and 20% salt water. All you have to do is go 30 or 40 kilometers to the west yeah. and it's too salty. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just on the right side of uh, fresher water. Wow. So that, that helps us out. Uh, Lassie, I wanted to ask you about uh, you've seen it from last summer in 2021, and you saw the weather in 2022, and Eileen hadn't seen the weather before, but uh, I, my impression of is every day over top of the Halifax, the weather can change. And what, what did you see during those eight, 10 days that you guys were with us? What did you see? about the weather it was like uh, there was some a couple of evenings also when we slept on the boat out on the water it was like so quiet the water and the can you see it was like so so nice but the weather changed like that we had a couple of days with really rough water with two meter high waves and uh, pretty rough waters and stuff like that but then it changed it can change in like in one hour from like big waves to small waves very dramatic i Good. saw the ball succeed like a harder in a harder way than last year it was much harder this year than last year it was. Yeah. yeah but during the expedition, we had everything like nice, calm waters, no wind, and beautiful sunsets. And then more wind, more waves, crazy currents, big uh, waves, really big uh, waves. That... Uh, and crazy current. And crazy current. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know all about that. I had an ex wife, and she could be very calm. And then all of a sudden, it, she would be very stormy. And so, you know, I had... The Baltic syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay, okay. Let's not get personal. Okay. No, no, no. But, um, uh, yeah, I, that's what... And here's my problem is the very first time SCSC took me out to the Halifax, it was beautiful weather, you know, maybe 10, 10 centimeter waves, and I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. And, and then the next time I went out, it was one meter, two meter waves. And I'm going, uh-oh. Uh, so 
it, it, it really is unpredictable. But uh, when you have that beautiful, calm, calm weather, and uh, remember that sunset when it was calm, uh, how beautiful it was. And it, it was fun to be out there. And we had good food. Uh, we had a good bunch of people. And uh, it, it turned out uh, really well. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, that was to me is you have your best times and then be prepared for maybe some bad weather. Yeah. That's the way it is. Yeah. 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 That's and live. That's also make it a little bit more interesting. Instead of it's not calm, it can be rough out there. It's a, yeah. it's a nice thing. Everybody yes. about safe okay. and everybody just hang on and when you go around, but yeah, but it was rough sometimes out there. Yeah. Yes. When the when the River Thames is in two meter waves, mm -hmm. uh, you know in Canada what we call that? That for the divers, that's called a rodeo. Rodeo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You got to ride the horses or yeah, ride yeah, yeah. the bulls. Eh? So, uh, but yeah, um, now uh, we've been improving the River Thames with special tools and with, you know, new compressors and new pumps and all that. And uh, we had a special edition. Uh, it cost 2,800 Canadian dollars, which is like 15,000 Danish kroner uh, for, for this underwater saw made by Nemo. It's a reciprocating saw that you, you, can, you can make surgical cuts if you have to on aircraft parts. Uh, did you uh, see that, uh, Lassie, and did you have your hands on it? Yeah, yeah, I went down with Gustav uh, with this tool and uh, fired out and Gustav fired out and it was a big help. Instead of like, like last year, there was a situation people used a hand saw underwater, you know, for a, a long time. This saw uh, put it down to like a short time. So yeah, it was good to cut some parts there apart and you can use it underwater. It's not very, I never saw a saw like that before. Yes, uh, and uh, so uh, we're going to use that uh, next summer. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's nice to have a, I would call it a, a tool chest. The boat and all of the tools are that tool chest. And every time we go out, we need the right tools uh, to do the job. So uh, it's fun to have this stuff, but it costs money to uh, buy that stuff. And uh, so um, it, it was a, it's a bit of a difficulty sometimes getting the right tools. But you know what I like? is Gustav has a machine shop down in the engine room of the tugboat. Yeah. So, you saw him. He can, like, remember that wooden frame that we used to lift the what was left of the rudder? Yeah. yeah. And, and he took the steel, the wooden, the wooden uh, casing wasn't strong enough to take the rudder. So he put steel bars, welded steel bars, and attached them to the wooden casing. And then we had exactly what we needed to lift the rudder. Yeah. 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 The, the, the boat is amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This That's is a good yeah. boat with the crane and, and, and stuff like that. But the thing was also, like, the crane cannot go all the way to the bottom of the chain. So we need this lifting balloon, and we made this skillet out of wood and the, the missile bars and stuff like that. So it got up like, a, that was super cool. And good teamwork on the boat because there was a lot of people involved to get it up. And at the surface, underwater, everything was super, super good. Very good. Sure. Now, what I'm going to be doing is September 17th at my museum out here in Western Canada, I'm giving a, a, a big PowerPoint program of everything that happened in Sweden this right. summer. Yeah. So uh, we'll be using some of your videos, some of the other divers' videos, and we'll be showing the high points of, uh, you know, lifting the flaps and lifting the rudder. And uh, remember, we got a big piece of intermediate wing. It was yeah. like three meters long. That's important for the rebuild. So I'll be giving a big uh, presentation in September. And then all winter long, I'll be uh, trying to 
convince people to donate to our project, and then we can we can keep on rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, Carl. Because that's all. Just like you said, things cost money, and uh, it's good to have some sponsors or something who can. Uh, because of course, stuff yeah. Like and, well, last summer, and I'm sure it's about the same. Last summer, we we burned up in the uh, on the engines of the tugboat. 2,400 liters of fuel. Oh, yeah. So, and you know what the, you know what the price of fuel has done in oh. the last year or so. Uh, uh, it's, yeah. start, it's starting to come down a little bit here in Canada. I don't know about Denmark, but uh, it's very expensive. Very expensive. So, well, it's it's the high cost of saving history, but it is it is fun, and mm. There, you would not believe how many thousands of people in Canada are watching what we're doing. So it's fun to save this history. And because it's a Canadian bomber, uh, it's got all that history in the background. And some of the amazing things, uh, these young men that were the bomber crewmen, yeah. after they came back from the war, they became doctors and captains of industry and lawyers so you know you can you can say these young men started out in this bomber and they became this and this and this yeah. and it, it's, it's fun to connect all those dots together and then you make make a human interest story so yeah. um i don't know what else to say except thank you for your for your brain power, your muscle power, for your diving experience, and uh, we hope to work with you into the future. And yes, if I have to bake you another birthday cake, I... <laughs> yeah. so uh, okay. Well, thanks you guys, and uh, thank, you. thank you for coming on. And let's uh, stay in touch, and uh, you know, through the winter time and into planning for next summer and uh welcome to tnt you <laughs> thank thanks you. Carl. thank you for, for allowing us to be a part of it yes. like i told you before this is like super cool for us okay. so, uh, thanks you guys and I, uh, i'll just finish off folks uh, we're doing all this for you uh all of your donations all of your financial help that you can give us allows us to keep going so please donate to Halifax 57 Rescue, and you can do it by going to a website. Just do a Google search and put in fundraiser 417498, just like it says on the screen, and uh, send in your uh, dollars, kroner, euros. Just make sure you send in that money because we're going to keep saving history for you. and. Remember, we leave no Halifax behind. We'll be right back on airplanehunters.org.